Hello fellow YouTube crafters, it's Angela with Angela's Crafty Space. I did change the name of my YouTube channel in case you didn't notice, <laughs> but it's still me. Um, I don't know why I did it, I was just needing a change I guess. So I want to do a different type of, um, and excuse it if you hear the thunder, um, there's a thunderstorm going on right now here in Pompano Beach, Florida. So it's been a raining since five o'clock this afternoon and it's now 10:25, so five hours straight now. So I'm coming on to do a reader's digest journal. That's what this is underneath this fabric. This one is special to me only because of the year and the month. It is a winter 1952 edition and my mom's birthday was November 8th, 1952. And unfortunately she passed away when I was only 12 years old on November 2nd, 1990. Two, 1992 so yes I was 12 years old at the time so um, so when I saw this go up on eBay I could not believe it was winter 1952 um, Reader's Digest so I figured I would make myself a journal with it and I would just fill it with things that I love which I love Tim Holtz so I had this fabric for a while now and I said well, why don't I use it for the cover so what I've already done is I've taken this heat and bond stuff okay and um, this one you can iron on and then you can sew it afterwards um, but I don't think I can sew through this chipboard that this cover is made out of. So this is a Reader's Digest. The spine was really destroyed, so I had to make a new spine for it. And I just took this from a backing of a paper pad, doubled it up, cut two one-inch spines, and boom, boom. Have that. So then the fabric, what I did was I ironed it first. And then I took this heat and bond stuff, which it comes in a roll like this. And it's got like glue on one side and paper on the other side. So you iron it on paper side up so that the glue is now adhered to the fabric that you want to lay down onto your book cover. So now what I do is I take the iron and I iron this on and it will stick to the book cover no problems and I won't have to worry about gluing it. The only thing is I missed a spot. <laughs> so right here I have no heat and bond. So I am going to have to glue the inside cover a little bit but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up the iron. It does not take long at all. And Scully is in the room with me. My two my three-year-old pit um one of these days i'll take the camera down and show you guys him he is a love bucket he is my wubby um so yeah so this heat and bond stuff is pretty cool i saw daisy collins use it forget the name of her youtube channel but um oh it might come to me i'm not sure something oh tsunami rose i was gonna say something rose tsunami rose so anyway it's this stuff here if you want to pick it up it's kind of cool it helps with adhesion that's all it does it's nothing fancy it doesn't add bulk it doesn't make it softer it doesn't do anything it just is adhesive that's all it is um so you iron it on to the wrong side with the paper side up and now we're going to iron it on to our book cover. I just want to feel that I've got it even all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and start ironing this now. And then where I didn't have the heat and bond, it just won't stick. Um, I did most of this ironing off camera because I didn't want to bore you guys to death. Um, but this is part of the process, so I figured let me put it in there a little bit. 
And then um, what we're going to do is decorate the cover maybe. And then next video we will pick out the pages, sew them in. And then maybe you'll see me journal in this every once in a while. Um, as memories come up, as I spend time with my sisters and, and things like that. Um, because that does happen because I was so young. Um, my one sister is 13 months my senior only. So she doesn't have as many memories as my one, my other sister, my oldest sister, who was, um, almost 16 at the time my mom passed. So, um... So there's that. So she has a lot more memories of things that um, either her or not I can remember. So that is pretty well adhered. I'm just going to go over it one more time. So my mom was a beautiful soul. She was an old soul. She smoked cigarettes um, and she got cancer. Not lung cancer, a different kind of cancer, but... You know, a lot of cancers stem from smoking cigarettes. They just don't know how bad they really are. <clears throat> so, so yeah, so she was only 39 years old, you guys. Um, I just turned 40 on May 20th. So that was a big step for me because my mom was, she was, what, uh, six days away from her 40th birthday when she passed away. So... 40 is a moment, a mon, oh, what do I want to say? 40 is a very, very um, memorable year for me and my sisters because we passed the 40 mark. <laughs> so we celebrate, you know? So, so there's that too. So me and my sisters are pretty close and all of our kids are pretty close, all the cousins. So we, we, we really struggled at times to stay in touch and, and whatnot. Um, through growing um, as individuals and, you know, just growing and having different, being in different stages in life and, you know, all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, so this is adhered, as you can see, very well adhered. Um, well, I don't even see where I didn't get the glue, I guess right there, but not very much at all, huh? So... <clears throat> I might just want to go around those edges a little bit more. I feel like I didn't get those very good. Like I know I got the inside really good, but... So yeah, so I'm 40 this year, so my mom's, um... I was 12 when she passed, so it's been, what... 28 years now so she's she's been gone a long time for me and I went through a lot of momentous times in my life where I really wish she had been there you know like the birth of my kids my two boys my marriage um, which I'm still only on my first one <laughs> Um, 15 years this year. We were married in 2005. I don't know how we've stayed together so long. But we have. So, there's that. Okay, so now I'm going to take this washi tape off because this spine should not move anymore. So that was just to hold that on. And now, what I have to put in the middle is this Tim Holtz paper which is also from the Wallflower collection. I don't know if I said that this fabric was Wallflower, and I made it way more on that side. So I think I am going to trim that just a tad, because I do not want it to be lop lopped sided. And I think if we just do that, we should be okay. I love this little cutter that goes on your finger. I think it is so easy to use and Fisker should pay me for my advertisement because it's amazing. 
Um, might keep that strip for something. Okay, let's see where we're at here now. Yeah, I like that better. Alright, let's see which way is the front. Alright, so the letters are going that way. So this is the right side. So we want this like this. Now I'm debating on what I want to use for glue. Do I want to put Mod Podge or do I want to use tacky glue? Paint it on. I'm leaning towards the tacky glue painted on. So I am going to grab my Aliens tacky glue. And I am going to open it like this and pour it on there. And then I'm going to paint. Whoa, that's a lot. But I think we will use it. And I'm going to get it in that crease real good there too. Because I'm going to varnish that in there real good. You guys, I am so hard on brushes that it doesn't even matter. I get them in my Ipsy bags all the time and I just use my makeup brushes because I have my favorites. I use them first and see if I like them, but most of the time I I just end up um, using them for crafts. As I'm sure you've heard in other videos of mine, I've given that secret out. <laughs> um, so I'm getting around the edges too here because I'm going to wrap this fabric around, which I will show you in a second. And then we're going to use the um, iron again. And then the inside of our cover will be pretty much done except for decorations. Okay, I think that that is good. I know it's so fun watching somebody glue, right? I find it relaxing, but I don't know. All right, let's lay this down first because I want to wrap the fabric around to cover the book edge. All right, now I'm going to get my thin folder. I think I was using it over here. I'm going to use this instead so I can really get in that crease there. I'm almost like scoring it. Oops, I made a hole there. That's okay though because I'm going to put lace there anyway. Or fabric of some sort because I want it to bend easily. See? So that's my whole meaning of that. I wish I knew where my actual bone folder was. That would be great. You can never find one when you need it. Alright. I think we're good there, though. The glue kind of sleeped through, which is no big deal. It'll just reinforce it a bit, I guess. Alright, so now to do the corners, what I'm doing is I'm going to push it in by the center, like that, and then I'm going to heat press that down because there's, well, maybe not on this corner, there's not. Where's the brush I just used? There it is. So this corner we're going to have to put some glue and we're just going to put it down like that and then I'm going to glue that and that and bring that over like so.
and then that's just going to get glued down like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the corner here. And so on. Oops, sorry, I was off screen there for a second. Ooh, there's the thunder. So like that all the way around and glue it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you on pause for a moment while I do that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and um, it'll be seamless for you guys, but um, what I did was I went ahead and took some of this fabric uh, ribbon that I got from the vintage polka dot shop, and I layered it with some of my vintage lace that I have in my stash that I love that I've been using a lot lately so we have that rose uh, fabric layered and it's got beige polka dots I'm gonna hold that up for you so maybe you can see that um, so it goes really well with everything so um, so we're gonna lay that down like that and we're oh my Fabri-Tex way over there be right Back, as Gail would say, talk amongst yourselves. Sorry, couldn't help myself. <laughs> oh, I think it's hilarious when she says that. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and fabric tack this on. Because when I was um, pressing that tool into the spine, I kind of ripped it, so, which I was going to cover it anyway, so it didn't matter. I just wanted to get that pressed in there. Okay, so first is going to be this. Vintage fabric. And I want that to come out. Just trying to work that fray out with the glue. I don't think I went out far enough. There we go. Now we're cooking. Alright, did I get over far enough over here? Yes. Alright, so there we go with that. Now we'll put the lace down. Let's see which side is the right side up. I can never tell. I think it's that side. Is it the side? Yeah, it's definitely this side. All right, I think I'm gonna put it on the lace here because this is kind of tight woven. center. Okay. Now we are ready to sew in our signatures. Once we get to that part of the journal journey, as we would say. I think I have that off center, but oh well now. Sorry, it was way too far off center. My OCD was kicking in. Okay, much better. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I know it doesn't have to be perfect, but damn it, should at least try. <laughs> should at least try to get it somewhat straight, right? 
Oh my goodness. I'm just cutting this off now because it is too long. Don't know how that happened. All right, so we are good there. Press that down into the crease. Okay. All right, we are cooking. All right, leave this to dry. And we're gonna call that a video for now and then I'll come back with part two once I have the papers picked out I guess I didn't have to put that up once I have the uh, inside papers picked out then we will sew that up and um, we'll decorate the cover in one of the videos oh I just love this fabric and we'll do a fabric flip I have some other Tim Holtz fabrics that I want to use in this journal as well and I have this strip that I cut off and this, the, uh, what you call it, strip two, I forget what they call that, this, um, the copyright strip, I guess. And then I have this strip here, so I want to use that. I was actually thinking of using this, maybe along here, you know, or along, no, like along there. So when you open it up, you see what it that it's from the Electic Elements Collection by Tim Holtz, Wallflower. I think that is perfect, right there. So I am going to cut that off. And I am going to put that there, or should I put it on the front? Now I'm starting to think I should maybe put it on the front. Let's cut the whole thing off. See what it would look like on the front. We could do that like that. Cut it. And then put the other stuff around. Or we could even put it like that. I don't know. I gotta think about that one, guys. I'm not sure what I want to do with it now. I thought it was a cut and clear case, but it's not. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and have a grateful day. Bye-bye.